Hello, I am Riley Wilson and welcome to the Band of One podcast. This podcast is created to help anyone that wants to be a more successful solo performer or become a solo performer and avoid a lot of the pratfalls and mistakes myself and some of my contemporaries have made. I have over 50 years of live performance experience and will also include tips from other top pros worldwide who've done the same thing in their regions. My desire is to make this actionable as well as entertaining. If you like what we do, subscribe and don't forget to share it. Let's get busy. It's time to talk about the mental side of being a solo performer. While millions of people learn a musical instrument every year and millions more continue playing, substantially fewer numbers are involved in live performance. Of that group, there are only a relative handful that pursue performing as a solo musician. It requires a completely different skill set and at least a modest amount of self-confidence. This can and should be developed and cultivated for basic success in life, but it's even more critical for solo performers. I'm not talking about being a braggart or a blowhard. I've already profiled Yancey Stevens, John Byron Haney, and David Fortune, who are all three successful solo performers that are neither braggarts or blowhards. In fact, the more successful a solo performer becomes, it seems they develop an equal amount of humility. If you were to ask them individually, it would probably tell you some of it comes with the territory. The mental aspect of being a solo performer means that you put yourself out there without anyone else as a wingman. You live or die based on your own merits strictly as a performer. Now, this has nothing to do with your intrinsic value as a human being. A real professional musician, actor, entertainer, or performer all understand that their value as individuals is separate from their skill set delighting other people. Public schools in the United States, and elsewhere in the world for that matter, do a mediocre job at best of teaching people self-confidence and self-worth. Curriculums designed around reading, writing, mathematics, etc. don't take into account variations in individuals, introverts versus extroverts, etc. In fact, most private schools don't even address this. Curriculums in public and private schools are designed by educators that usually have no background in sales, marketing, or even public relations. Once someone enters into those fields, they find out very quickly that they're going to need a lot more education than their schooling system provided them. This usually leads to a trip to the local library or the bookstore where they discover titles by people like Zig Ziglar, Brian Tracy, Tony Robbins, etc. I've mentioned some of these authors before in a prior podcast. Those of you who have any sales or marketing background are probably familiar with all of this. I learned many years ago that everyone is in the sales business. You're either selling goods or services, or you're selling yourself. If you were married or have a significant other, you sold them on you. If you have a family, you're selling your children your philosophy on child-rearing and how to be successful in life. If you have an online resume on LinkedIn, Indeed, or the like, you're engaged in indirect selling. If you ever had a job interview or contacted someone about booking you or your group, you were involved in direct sales. Therefore, any investment in reading a sales book, buying a series of audio recordings, or attending a motivational seminar are really investments in yourself. Earl Nightingale says they end up paying you in cash, either directly or indirectly. Brian Tracy points out that most colleges and universities teach marketing because they aren't honest enough to admit they are in the sales business. Marketing is simply a rebranding of the word sales, which often strikes terror into people's hearts. <laughs> Think about buying a car for a moment at a dealership. Does that raise your blood pressure? Many people are so scared about the idea of sales and being sold by a salesman that they now have internet sales managers at car dealerships so people can buy online instead of having to meet and deal with a car salesperson, sales manager, and the like in person. Okay, Riley, why is knowing about sales important if I want to be a solo performer? Because it's necessary in order to book gigs. Even reading one good sales book will help you feel more confident approaching that restaurant manager, retirement facility director, or wine bar about performing for them. While it's important to be confident in any performing situation, 
It's more so when you're it, as in solo work. Self-confidence will help you improve in every part of your life, be it personal or professional or both. Self-confidence is a skill set you can and should work on daily to do and be your best self. Some people use affirmations, set aloud daily in order to describe what they want to do, have, or become. If you prefer, put them on a recording and listen to them first thing in the morning and last thing at night. Or write them down and read them aloud and over time, they will go to the subconscious mind and become part of your everyday behaviors. I detail this more in depth in podcast number three. This is helpful before, during, and after a performance. Because from time to time, the wheels may in fact come off the bus. If someone acts rude or tries to create drama at a show, do your best to remain unfazed and concentrate on doing the best performance you can do. I personally make sure to be at a performance early enough to be set up and ready to go at the appointed time. I don't arrive two or three hours early unless the client requested it and pays me extra. I don't smoke, do drugs or alcohol, and try to provide the finest value I can for the client that hired me. I keep focused on why I am there, which is to entertain the audience. What about requests? David Borchin explains why he doesn't take requests in podcast episode 14. Some musicians thrive on requests and actually invite audiences to stump them in order to make more tips. I do agree with David that when you do that, it does take some of the uniqueness off your individual show that you may have prepared long and hard for. I just returned from a show in central Kansas and was deluged with several requests on that gig. I explained that because the sequences are not karaoke tracks, it takes a lot of time and effort for me to construct even one of them. I let the audience know about my webpage and encourage them to go out and find anything on the site that I am able to play. Most crowds understand that and are willing and happy to hear me play a variety of different types of tunes. Now, your act might be different. For example, David Fortune plays exclusively smooth jazz now, while my friend John Byron Haney does country and occasionally some rock and pop material. Many musicians get tired of performing as porch monkeys, as my former GIT teacher Steve Travada used to joke, and end up playing their own material. Now, depending on your direction and the nature of your show, you might be able to do the same thing. Understand you won't be able to please all the people all the time. I've had a couple of gigs in the last decade that didn't go well, either because of expectations from the client or because of people that simply couldn't be made happy no matter what you do. Under no circumstances should you let that affect you and your attitude and your self-concept about your performance. Understand how unusual it is to be a musician that performs for others in the first place. Second, if you do already play solo shows or are beginning to do so, you are literally one-tenth of one percent of all musicians. Once you start your performance, do your best to remain positive and assume people are enjoying what you do. I have performed dozens of shows over the years where I got little, if any, positive feedback from the audience until the first break and sometimes at the end of the night. Most good booking agents will ask performers they've hired to talk to the client on that first break and make sure that everything is going the way that they want it to. This is important in a private or corporate event, but it can be also useful at a restaurant or any other sort of show. Remember the business mantra, feedback is the breakfast of champions. What if you don't get any feedback? Online booking sites, The Bash, Gig Heaven, and Gig Salad ask clients to provide feedback on the entertainer they hired and even provide a link to do so from their phone, tablet, or computer. Yet even with all this, about 30% of my buyers refuse to provide comments. I've recently begun playing more retirement companies, and I see the same thing happen. For example, I played a nearby facility last week and had to email the client a week later to find out her thoughts and see if they want me to return. I got a lot of applause and, is typical of many of these types of engagements, had several people come up afterwards and say how much they enjoyed my performance. And people do this not communicating for a variety of reasons. However, don't allow this to get you down. Concentrate on doing the best show you can and don't get in your own head. In fact, I'll say that again because it's that important. Don't get in your own head. 
Talent buyers, whether they are a restaurant owner, party planner, business owner, or someone who hired you for a private party, are often distracted, overwhelmed, or simply don't think it important enough to follow through. It's frustrating, but as I learned in an early business meeting years ago, concentrate on your own business and don't worry about anyone else. I see a lot of this when bidding for online gigs. I reach out with a message to the client on one of the booking sites, and then it's often crickets, nothing. I also follow up with an email or text message, and 80% of the time, people who ask for a quote can't be bothered to respond. I've dealt with this for decades in the voiceover business, and the underlying answer is, if I like you, I will reach out. If not, don't bother me because I am not interested. Common courtesy is a rare find in the 21st century, especially in business. Dial back your expectations of others as a solo performer, and it will help your mental health in a big way. How is your mood when it comes to playing gigs? I've been doing this for so long now that I actually look forward to each show, and I'm generally happier or more upbeat on gig days than non-gig days. If you are one of those fortunate few that have a regular gig every week or so, you may not have to look for work as often as those of us with a more freelance approach. Booking solo gigs, like any other sales job, is a numbers game. Figure on contacting 20 people to book one to three paying jobs. Some weeks you'll do better, and some weeks you'll do worse. Overall, looking for work regularly will help you book more work. Keep a positive attitude about yourself and about your show, and you'll do just fine. What happens if the client's not happy? Say you were too loud, or perhaps not loud enough. Maybe they want a different style of music you can't perform. Thank them for their input and simply do the best you can with what you have. Own what you can change and simply ignore the rest. In a prior podcast, I mentioned a large corporate job I did a few years back where I needed more amplification. I addressed it with the client before I ever left town, and therefore, that was out of my hands. Occasionally, clients may have too much to drink or simply be unreasonable and impossible to please. On those rare occasions, just figure it's one of those shows that it doesn't happen that often. Keep your attitude in check and simply remind yourself, of all the gigs I've ever played in my life, this is one of them. I found it important to keep a positive mental attitude when I'm working on a new song. I use sequences, and some of them have taken dozens of hours to master. I learned many years ago the importance of being able to work by myself for long hours on something that I wouldn't be paid for or see the immediate benefit of until sometime in the future. If you're planning on performing solo or are already doing this, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you need to devote time and solitude to develop something new, you may find this is exactly what you need to set you apart for success. And a lot of this doesn't come easily. For example, writing and publishing my guitar method called Guitar Made Simpler, an intelligent approach, was one of the hardest things I ever did. After giving the material out to students as handouts in the early 2000s, I finally assembled it on my little eMac computer and got ready to do a sample print. Went to my local Kinko's and discovered everything was off-centered. I then had to spend a few hundred dollars on a desktop publishing program called Quark Express and then learn how to use a desktop publishing program in order to recreate the book inside. This took another six months to recreate everything within Quark. At one point, I was so depressed that I simply lay down and curled up in the fetal position in my closet. However, while I was down, I was not out. I persevered and finally saw through that guitar method being published and sold within the year. In fact, I just went to press with the sixth edition as of late summer 2023. The book is a success, and many students have struggled to learn the guitar have finally begun to master it with the help of the book. Make sure that you eat correctly, get plenty of rest, and drink enough water to be able to perform under any circumstance when you're actually doing a solo show. Developing mental toughness stems from a belief in yourself and in your value as a human being as well as a performer. Start today to work on your own mental toughness and develop the ability to believe in yourself regardless of how many obstacles get thrown in your way. Okay, it's time for you to do something actionable. Otherwise, you're simply listening to me talk and that's not what the Band of One podcast is all about. 
First, get a sales or self-development book from the bookstore and start reading it. Second, make a list of what makes you unique so when, not if, you find yourself feeling marginalized, you can look back at that list and remind yourself, I am enough. You've been listening to the Band of One podcast. I'm Riley Wilson, and thanks for joining me. If you have ideas for upcoming episodes, I'd love to hear from you. Get in touch at your convenience through our webpage, which is guitarmadesimpler.com. You can also reach out on our Facebook page at Band of One Podcast. See you next time.